welcome back. Bit of a hiatus on the channel. Apologies for that. We've got a cracker of a video ahead of us today. I'm off to London to go and see something absolutely incredible. But before you do that, make sure you check out Car Vertical before you buy your next car. There's loads of hidden nasties on millions of cars all over the UK. Don't be stunned by buying a car that has a hidden past. Download a Car Vertical report. Use the code on the screen there. It's just TG. It's a nice and easy code. Make sure you go and download the report because it'll come up with crash damage, outstanding finance, mileage discrepancies, previously stolen reports, outstanding recalls, and a whole host more. So don't get stung. Get a car vertical report. Use code TGE. You'll get a discount. The link is in the pink comment and in the description. Let's head over to London right now in my Ferrari. See what's going on. Hello, hello, and welcome back to TG TV. And more specifically, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Underground in Prime Mayfair. I've got my Lusso today because I'm a busy bee. More on what else I'm up to today another time. But I brought my Lusso along to P7 Auto Works because I'm discussing doing a few bits and bobs. Potentially some Novitech stuff, some PPF stuff, and also that Novitech stuff will be aesthetic as well as an exhaust. So they can do it all here, but they've got something very, very special that I'm going to show you in this video. So come with me then to their newly opened showroom down here. So if you're in Mayfair, Central London, you come shopping, car spotting, whatever it is you're doing, come down here, because not only can you get your car washed, you can get paint protection, wrapping, all that kind of stuff here, but they'll also do various bits and bobs. So if your wheels are curved or you need any bodywork stuff, they'll literally sort anything out for you down here. It's super secure, super safe. And as I say, you name it, they'll do it. They'll obviously also do detailing and all the rest of it, paint correction. So this car actually here, I'm not gonna show you the plate, but this is actually Skepta's car. He's currently at Coachella, living it up, uh, but he'll be back to collect this thing. So very cool. I think those are 24s wild they were in another site before but this is their new location is absolutely amazing so we've obviously got some very exciting bits in there which i'll show you very shortly not just modern stuff that they work on here this is a 328 here for some aesthetic bit which i will not ruin the surprise on got some brand in here as well so this is literally just been perfect. i've been here before but i didn't want to show you guys before they got the branding all sorted there we go there's a list of absolutely everything they've got going on here anyway come in with me and we'll take a look this is what I'm here to see then. This is an SLR HDK. Some of you will have seen this on Instagram. It made quite an abrupt, raucous appearance in London the other day. So SLR, you obviously know what that means. And as an SLS owner, I'm a massive fan of these. This is the next logical step up from my SLS and a car that loads of you have been telling me to get. In fact, SLR in standard guys and I do think the SLRs in standard guys despite the fact they had mixed reviews when they came out I do think it's a car that's going to grow in collectors affections and I think it's going to be good news for the future so HDK then in case you're wondering means high downforce kit and this is actually an homage to a 722 GT race car co-developed with Gordon Murray that actually never ever ended up racing so it's a homage to a, a race car that actually never raced however it is an absolutely unbelievable bit of kit a lot of the upgrades are aesthetic and that's outside and inside obviously you've got more functional downforce should you need it going around Harrods and power is up by just 10 brake horsepower but that's mainly down to the exhaust system that this thing uses so there's absolutely loads of cool details we're going to go around and see that in a second but there's only 12 of these ever made and each one has a unique paint job i suspect this is probably one of the most expensive paint jobs you could have optioned on the slr hdk because every single rivet bolt is all hand painted i couldn't believe it i assumed it was going to be a wrap but I don't think you see that detail there it's absolutely unreal and those details carry on around the whole car from the teeth at the front to the little eyes there and even on the Mercedes badge there you've got a bit of patina like on a race car and then you've got kind of yellow tips on there as well you've got obviously a fighter jet theme to it and you've got teeth painted onto the front grille it's absolutely insane I don't think I've ever seen a paint job like this and I didn't even realize you could do a paint job like this to be honest with you it's nuts. I dread to think how much this particular variant costs. If you wanted one of these, you'd have to kick off with a standard SLR coupe, which I've actually driven not that long ago with Historics Auctions, but they run to about 300, 350K for a nice one. You can probably find a dog for sort of 250, 280, I suspect, in the trade. But then a conversion, the HDK conversion, will cost you starting from 280,000 on 
top, which actually surprised me because I didn't think that that was that bad. Not that I've got 280 grand to lob around at things like this, but I didn't think it was that bad. So all in for one of these cars, you could be looking oh, sub 800K maybe, 600K all in with a bit of a, with a few bells and whistles thrown on top. Not so bad on the scheme of things. All the details around the car are absolutely insane. You've obviously got the exhaust pipes that come out the side there with a little warning painted above it. They've got white exhaust tips. Absolutely bonkers. I love seeing through here. You've got all the, got it all going on through here. It's literally like a fighter jet. There's tin foil, the lot, everywhere. The wheels are very special as well. And there's so many nice details as well that aren't immediately apparent. Look at that center cap there. MSO SLR HDK. So, so cool. The detail even on the Honey Badger down here. This is actually part of a collection called the Lee Collection. Many of you that are into your cars will know exactly who owns this car and what else he's got in his garage. So I'm not gonna nause on about that, uh, but make sure you're following him, him on Instagram. A chaotic, chaotic guy. He's got absolutely every car you've ever seen and probably pretty much every boat and plane you've ever seen either. He is, uh, he's an animal, that bloke. He's got some serious, serious stuff. So around the back of the car then, you've always got this enormous wing here and it's not just wings stuck on, you've also got this diffuser like a race car. Look at the thing. It's ridiculous, but I like the way they haven't skimped. Everywhere you look and you think, ah, they're not gonna have bothered with that part. You look down there and they have. They didn't need to put that detail over there. They didn't need to bother. They didn't need to put any of this under here. They literally, that would have been hours and hours and hours of work, but that's under the car. You can't even see it. It's probably gonna get covered in mud within five seconds. Speaking of that then, the reason it's here, P7 Auto Works, is because it's getting PPF. I mean, you can't drive a car like this without PPF, with a paint job like that, you'd be absolutely nuts. To get into the car then, I mean, it's literally labeled. The doors pop up like so. And you've got amazing, amazing detail. You've got Alcantara and this really nice pastel kind of greeny color. Look at the stitching on here. MSO are well known for the quality of their interiors. And in fact, they have got an interior partner, which I, I can't actually mention, I don't think, that do a lot of the work, but they are unbelievable. I know exactly who does it, and they are top, top, top notch. So look at those seats. The color scheme, if you wrote it down, you say, look, mate, I'm gonna go for tan seats, I'm gonna go for a bit of sort of pastel, sort of twister colored um, center console bits in the doors, and then I'm gonna go for yellow seat belts. I would say, you've lost your mind. That is gonna look terrible, but actually, it looks unbelievable. And what I really, really like, and call me Captain Boring here, you've got box stitch carpets here as well. I love a bit of box stitch, it's vintage vibes. And then you've got exposed carbon in the floor there as well, just like a race car. But there's so many different materials and they all come together amazingly. I just don't know how someone thought that this would work and had the genius idea to put all of this together in such a way. But you've got the silhouette of the car there and you've got another honey badger up there in the headrest. Absolutely absurd. These are the original seats. The original seats are amazing. They've obviously been retrimmed. They're completely shod in carbon, but you've got more rivets that have been added around them as well. These are not standard. Obviously the metal detailing in the seats there, that's not standard. But the whole interior has received a revival. You've got more box carpet stitching there, and you've got your little plaque there as well, commemorating this specific car number eight of 12. Satin weave carpet all through the back as well. And actually, although it's been retrimmed, they haven't done really anything to the design of the interior. And that's a testament to how well this was designed in the first place. Absolutely adore the center console on this car. There's no screens everywhere annoying you and dating it and aging it. You've just got the big SLR there and obviously you've got that five speed gearbox. That has remained absolutely unchanged from the standard car. You've of course got the little flappy paddle up there with your start stop button in the top of the gear stick. Absolutely iconic. A different gearbox to that in the SLS. The supercharged V8 in this thing would probably rip the gearbox in the SLS apart. It just delivers so much torque. Let's close this door down then. You've even got little rockets under there as well. Bombs, should we say. Fairly topical at the moment. Going around to this side then. Again, steering wheel is actually the standard wheel. The dials have been revised slightly with different colors, but the dash isn't new either. They've kept 
all the original charm of the original car, just save, I think, for a 12 o'clock marker they've now put in in yellow. Curiously, with the SLR, there are no paddles. You've just got these buttons behind the back of the steering wheel, and I've been told, actually, in having driven one, you're not really going to use the paddles in this car. This thing is more of a cruiser, and actually, when it came out in standard, guys, a lot of people were surprised, because they heard that Gordon Murray, McLaren, and Mercedes were working on basing an Enzo and a Carrera GT uh, competitor, and when this came out, people were surprised that what they got was a 1600 kilo supercharged V8 basic sort of cruiser. So yeah, totally different vibe to the Crow GT and that's actually what makes me want one of these because it's completely, completely different. Unfortunately, they're all sold out. Let's have a little look at the pedals down there. More box stitching down here, more exposed carbon. I mean, what a thing. I'm absolutely in love. I love this thing. There's pastel detailing in the door as well. Absolutely lovely, and you've got more bombs on this side because who doesn't need bombs painted underneath their doors? Wonderful. I think that's pretty much all we've got time for with this car. I've got to get out of here, out of P7 Auto Works. The only other final things to touch on is the fact that this car is 60 millimeters wider than the original. MSO have also tweaked the suspension, and I just think it's really, really cool to have a homage to a racing car that was developed by none other than Mr. Gordon Murray. And actually the race car, the 72 GT, that Gordon Murray co-developed, actually did convince the powers that be to go racing. However, the racing cars that followed after the 72 GT actually built by RML. Um, they did go racing, but it wasn't the 722 GT. So a moment in time and a very special place in Mercedes and McLaren history with the iconic and inimitable Gordon Murray behind it all. Amazing piece of kit and I'm very grateful to P7 Auto Works for allowing me to come and look at this amazing, amazing thing. So hopefully at some point I will see and hear this driving around London, so stay tuned. For now then, from here, from P7 Auto Works in the heart of Mayfair, thank you very much for watching. Make sure, of course, if you are here and you do want your car cleaned or you want anything done, come and pay the guys a visit. It's super easy to get in upstairs. It's nice and wide. It's not horrible and narrow like most of the underground car parks in London. And actually, if you book it in for a wash and some other bits, it's probably cheaper than parking around here. So that's your top tip. I didn't say that. Right, for now, thank you very much for watching and I will see you all very soon. Ciao.